signed up for in the, the, the series that we're running in Farm Trip Friday, which we started in November. And um, the intention is just to really make um, our tourism providers in the district more familiar with um, product that is that we have within the district. Um, and also there's new products coming on board all the time. So it's just to kind of build that knowledge base and also um, to allow for opportunities to work together and to collaborate to to support all of our businesses um, as we go forward. So. Um, I know certainly after the first session in November, um, it was very well received. There was a lot of positive feedback um, and certainly, you know, um, people wanted to see more of this. So we're delighted that people are um, offering to participate and it's great. And I say we've more people lined up for the months ahead. So that's great. Um, I know one of the one of the elements of feedback the last time was around having guest speakers um, and even looking at you know what people are doing in different areas and things so we have looked into that and we will be bringing that into the the future elements of Fam Trip Friday so um, yeah we have taken that on board. So today we're delighted that we have um, John O'Neill from the Manor House Country Hotel with us um, and John is going to be sharing with you some information around the property and things that they're working on at the minute and um, we have Barry Flanagan from Earn Water Taxi um, sharing uh, what Barry's doing at the moment and then we have Ethan uh, Lockery and Stevie Collins who have both um, worked on and are very um, proactive in the development of the mountain bike trails at Gorch and Glen Forest Park. So just recently opened, so it'll be great to hear um, a bit more about that and what it can mean for your businesses as well. So um, with that, I think we'll get started and I'm going to let, um, and first of all, we're going to start with John. And before John takes the floor to talk about the business, we'll just start with a little um, video that John has prepared for you all. So hope the technology works, folks, but here we go. Volume. Oh, is the volume not working, John? No. I see that's where the technology comes in. Just we'll pause it a wee minute, folks, to see. Is this working for me, Joanne? Have you any? Is it not working, John? No, um, it doesn't matter for me, as long as it's working for everybody else. No, it's not playing right. It was playing right beforehand, so I'm not quite sure why it's not this time. Is the volume working for you, Joanne? No? No, can't Is hear it... anything, and the, 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 the picture's quite broken too. Oh. One of the things sometimes, uh, if, if you try um click the share screen, uh, but your share screen button, and then you, you should get a couple of different options, and then choose advanced, and then click share computer signed. That sometimes fix it. Okay, folks, so bear with us. Apologies. Straight out of the box. Now, one second. Um, share screen now. Advanced. Um, where is this? Music or computer signed only? That? And then, no, if you over to the right, there should be one send share computer signed, usually. Mm. No. I don't have any more options, folks. Oh, here. Share computer sound. Right. We're going to try again, folks. Let's see. New share. No. Right, we have the share computer sign, but now it's not letting me bring up my presentation. Hmm. No. Anybody, any suggestions? George has a message in the chat, Karen. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back to this to see because now that I've shared the computer sound it might be sufficient so let's see what this does folks is that it yep that's it magic enjoy Jerusalem <laughs> Jerusalem. 
Well done, John. It's a great video. Over to you. Okay. Um, if anybody needs to practice those uh, dance steps on the stairs, I, I have personal experience of how to pull a calf muscle when you're 57 years of age. So I, I don't uh, wouldn't be recommending it to anybody. Anyway, we did that as a bit of fun. We did it as to be part of the Fermanagh and Oma tourism push on the or the Fermanagh Lakeland tourism push on. The Jerusalem Challenge, which I think had over 100,000 views, and, and then we used the opportunity to have a promotional video for ourselves for reopening. So it was a bit of fun. It was good for the team to do, and I thought it was a good one to share with you this morning. Uh, it's going to be released next week, so you're having a private viewing, and uh, I thought it was good because it gives you an overview of the property, our location next to the lake, uh, on the Oma side, uh, five miles outside on the Skillen, uh, 80 bedroom property, full leisure and spa facilities, extensive grounds. And we have uh, a marina uh, that sits below us, separate property, but we obviously link in very closely with them. They have uh, lodges, chalets, uh, boat hire, water activities and all that sort of thing on site as well as golf and tennis. So, um, the first sort of point up there on domestic tourism is going to be, and I know all you people know all of this already, uh, it's going to be more important this year than ever, uh, given the flight restrictions uh, and given the uncertainty around, certainly for the like of ourselves, for tour groups that we normally do from the United States and the UK, uh, and to a lesser extent from the ROI and uh, you just wonder, would there be a hesitancy maybe for ROI to come up? Hopefully there won't. Uh, and I do think there could be maybe a reluctance from people from the north maybe to go down. So domestic tourism, certainly uh, for the Fermanagh Oma district, I think this year is going to be huge. And that would be sort of on the back of the demand that we had last year when we reopened. Uh, it was absolutely massive. Um, and I know that certainly all our marketing <coughs> uh, this year is geared very much towards that uh, staycation experience. Uh, if you take where we're located, and I talk about Fermanagh and Oma uh, in general, is you know we're two hours from anybody, really in the north of Ireland, and we certainly get a huge pull from the greater Belfast area, huge pull from down and Armagh, and those people are very keen to explore the local region. Uh, and if you think of somebody, and I'm speaking really from, a, from an hotelier's point of view, if you have somebody that's based in the Manor House 
uh, for a two, three night stay. And that's typically uh, when they do make the decision, the buy-in decision to come, uh, it will be a two, three night experience uh, because this is their holidays for the summer. They're not going abroad and uh, they're not, don't particularly want to be sitting about the hotel all day. You will get somebody that's into their gourmet type experience, and that's really what they want to do and sit about and read books. But our experience has that uh, showing that everybody wants to get out and about and explore the region, explore the area, and it's <clears throat> creating memories. Uh, lovely phrase, but it's true. Um, and the type of things that we would be asked for regularly is, you know, two adults, three kids, what, you know, if you think of the, the family bubble as such, they've all been living in a house for the last six months at close quarters. Uh, uh, they don't want to be living in an hotel bedroom for another two or three days. So they want to get out and about and explore the local areas. Uh, boating was huge last year. And I know that the 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 weather lent itself very much to that also uh, walking exploring and i know that close by obviously we have the stairway to heaven we have gorge and glen uh, with the american folk park and activities as well todd's leap um share center uh, and listen to ski national trust properties any water activities uh, little red boats in enniskillen was huge last year very simple concept, but the demand was unbelievable. So from the hotelier's point of view, we don't want to be uh, running around, oh, here's a piece of paper for that, here's a piece of paper for this, there's a piece of paper for that. That day is gone. People want instant access. They want video content. They want to be able to look at it on their phone. And if possible, they want to be able to book it on their phone. I did have a conversation with Karen a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about this, about the idea of developing an app uh, where everything's there and the hotelier or the self-catering person, et cetera, can say, listen, there's, a, there's an app for the area, log in and you can see everything that you want to see there. In the absence of that, um, again, I was speaking to Karen, we're in the middle of developing a, a new website and you know, the importance that we're attaching to that is that we're developing a, a section on the website purely to do with activities in the local area and this idea of your top 20 activities uh, you know we're more than happy to uh, and I know a lot of these sort of people are online this morning we're, we're more than happy to work with anybody and it's where we can say to our guests which are because when they come into the hotel they're automatically on the wi-fi they're automatically bounce on to our website uh, go to the activity section. You can see what's in the local area and behind all those activities will be uh, a link to that activities provider's landing page with the information that our guests need. And as I say, I know that some people have taken on that there's a book now facility. They want to do it. They want to know, can they go now? Can they go today? Et cetera, et cetera. And they will explore prior to coming to the manor, particularly if they're coming for two, three days, they will explore what can we do in the local area, this, that, and the other. And as I say, if we have that on our on our website page, they're going to create their own memories, their own experiences. Everybody has different preferences in what they want to do, what they want to visit. But we see that page as being a one-stop shop and very important to uh, their, the, the guest experience. Uh, they'll have their breakfast to disappear and we don't expect to see them until that evening time again for their dinner. So we see that as very important. Uh, in terms of ourselves then, if we want to work with a supplier, uh, you know, typically we would get suppliers sent to us, which well, so that's great, uh, John, you bundle it into your package and we'll give you a rate, we'll give you a preferred rate and you can charge whatever you want. Speaking on behalf of the Manor Hotel, I know that other properties are the same. That actually gives hotel hotels problems when it comes to VAT, etc. So if I have a 20 pounds built into a package uh, for whatever activity and we bundle it into our accommodation and dinner package, you know, we're paying the VAT at source and how do you cross charge it and all the rest of it. So, you know, the like of our accountant would say to us, no, no, let the people book directly with the provider, then that takes us out of the loop. So then that leaves our accounting practices a lot easier. And uh, 
even our, even our closest provider who's actually on site, uh, that's the arrangement that we have, and it's cleaner for you, and it's cleaner for us. Um, I suppose if I was honest, uh, there would be a whole lot more we could and should be doing uh, with local activity providers. Uh, hoteliers get very much um, caught up in the in the day to day running of their business uh, and the rooms that they're selling and the operational issues that they encounter on a day to day basis. Uh, but I suppose this time uh, that we've been given now. Uh, it gives you a chance to reflect and say, well, we really should be doing more because this is what the guest wants. Uh, so that's why I was keen to be to be speaking on this platform this morning. It is something that we've addressed in our new website. Uh, and I think it's something that's going to be very important uh, for any business going forward, given the fact that probably this year and even next year, there will be that hesitancy to go abroad traditionally for your family holiday or whatever it is to Spain. So uh, people will be looking for more things to do at home. Not necessarily, yes, in the summer season, but more so on weekends for couples. Uh, you know, this, this season is going to just keep going on and on and on and on because there will be that pent up demand. So that's where we are. Um, the Manor House itself is, is a, uh, it's a successful business built up by the McKenna family over the last 30 years. And uh, there's been huge investment in the property over the last 10 years, so that we feel that that leaves us well placed to accommodate uh, the various market segments uh, that are available to us. Uh, I'm fortunate to be general manager of it over the last five years. And uh, we, we see it now as an exciting time to, to relaunch, to reset uh, and to be in a position to deliver the demand that's certainly going to be coming down the line in, in May or June. All right, Karen. That's perfect, John. Thank you very much for that. Um, I suppose, folks, what I should have said at the start is if people have any questions, um, I'm sure if you want to speak to John now or put them in the chat box or we can chat at the end. Um, it's whatever way you want to, to do it, folks. Yeah. Um, I'm more than happy to speak to anybody and uh, my personal email address is gm at manorhousecountryhotel.com and if anybody has any ideas or they, they'd like to hook up with us in providing an activity please email me and I'll, I'll respond to you so it's gm at manorhousecountryhotel.com we're trying to find a longer email address but we just can't <laughs> get there at the minute with that one. That's perfect, John. Thank you so much. Um, and it's exactly what you're saying there is around, and, and that is one of the points of doing this is that, you know, yes, everyone's busy running their own business, but from the visitor point of view, they want to know what the destination has to offer. They want to know what the wider um, offering is and what the experience is. And I suppose, look, whether it's domestic or international, you know, if you're getting it right for the domestic market, the international market, when it comes, you know, we'll appreciate that too. So, mm -hmm. um, no, that's great, uh, John. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, Joanne, I don't, are there any questions at this stage? I can't see them, but if not, we'll move on to the next one. No, nothing yet. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, so next, folks, we're going to move on to uh, Mr. Barry Flanagan. Um, I don't know what we say, the the face of the lakes in Fermanagh at the moment. <laughs> um, but uh, I say Barry's going to take us through a presentation and um, giving us some information around uh, his business, what he does, and certainly what he can offer to the visitors um, coming to the area. So, um, Barry, I'll uh, let you take it away. Thanks very much, Karen. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, it's been it's great to hear about other tourism businesses. You know, I think, as John said, we're going to, we're going to need each other more than ever um, to promote each other now. So thanks for that opportunity. So the, the water taxi, I would been going for five years now. Um, not too sure if 2020 counts as a year, but in that time, we've brought about um, just over 10,000 people out on the lock to engage with the landscape and its heritage. So we deal with mostly small um, groups of eight up to 16 and with our two eight-seater boats. Um, back in 2019, which seems like a long time ago now, we were selected by Tourism NA um, 
as one of 23 experiences to launch the new tourism brand, Embrace the Giant Spirit. Um, so the marketing campaign was to try and encourage people to come to Northern Ireland across the island of Ireland. Um, and it was all about getting out and about and exploring the landscape. So they've done a video for us and some photography, as you can see in that image there, two people heading out to Devonish. That was part of the campaign. Uh, our customers, I suppose, is a very, very strong family customer base. And we would attract multiple generations of families. So you get families from the grandchild up to the grandparents coming out with us. Um, as it's an activity, they can all experience together. And it seems to me that Fermanagh, you know, it would be one of those places that works really well for that for that type of family group. Uh, basically, we target people maybe looking for experiences that encompass. Um, give people the opportunity to travel the length and breadth of Lockern by boat with our local guides. The lock itself has over 150 islands to explore and the island at the very heart of the lock is Inniskillen, Ireland's only island town. The journey starts at the historic Inniskillen Castle before venturing off to more remote parts of the loch to find some ancient ruins, hear some of the local myths and legends and see nature at its very best. We are so lucky to have one of the most unspoiled beautiful waterways in the world here and what we do is just help to bring the place to life in a relaxed and personal way the experience itself is all about island discovery and one of the highlights of the journey is the iconic devonish island it's a sixth century monastic site with its ancient ruins and one of the best preserved ruined towers anywhere in Ireland. Just 15 minutes downstream and you can feel like you've gone back in time. Standing in a landscape that hasn't changed much in hundreds and hundreds of years, it's magical. we tell tie together all the elements that make up Lockburn's giant spirit, its geology, its nature, its history and most importantly its people and that's what gives our guests an appreciation of what we've seen. It becomes much more than just a lock to them, instead it's an ancient highway every island and unturned stone tells a story. Hi, so that was part of the campaign. We were very lucky to be offered, you know, all the, uh, the power and force of marketing from TNA, so it was great to get a bit of promotion. Um, couldn't have came at a worse time, <laughs> um, you know, really, because the the marketing campaign was was for twenty twenty, um, so we we really didn't see the, the benefit of that, but um, we're hoping it'll still carry into twenty one and twenty two. Um, so we're really targeting people who are looking for experiences that encompass all these different elements, you know, local culture, learning, scenic beauty great food and drink, um, great quality accommodation. And so these are things that we would try to bring together, you know, um, when, especially when we're teaming up with the likes of the Locker and Resort uh, to pick up their customers at, at the public jetty there at the resort, the concierge would bring them down and golf buggy. We'd pick them up and, and take them for an hour or two or an hour and a half tour, um, up to three hour tour and, and with a great feedback on those. So the location there, you can see the just the islands um, following on from COVID. Nick John said there's definitely a trend towards um, outdoor adventure and, and exploring landscapes. So I think as a destination, we're really well placed for the recovery. Uh, we cover the whole of the Loch Erne. Um, you know, we can go from anywhere from Crom 
to Blake. It's not too often we're asked to go up to Blake, but hopefully we will be more in the future. I'd, I'd like to do that trip. It's uh, probably a, a full day outing, but we'll, we, we're open to open to suggestions. Uh, my interest, I suppose, grew um, history. Of the, could you just go back a couple of slides there, Karen? Thanks so much. Um, that island in the foreground there is kind of sums up what, what we do. That that island is called Tranish Island, and that view is looking up towards Carry Bridge and Inniskillen. And you can see all the islands. The upper lock's one of my favourite parts of the lock. But we try to tell the stories of all these different islands. And, and Tranish Island had had its own school at one time. It even had its own uh, pipe band and its own football team. So there's. Every island on that pic, uh, image there has has a story to tell, and so we try to uncover these stories for our, for our guests. We can skip on one there now, Karen. Thanks. All right, so we depart from Enniskillen Castle generally, but we can depart from any accessible jetty on the lock. Um, but it's great having the the main visitor hub, um, Enniskillen Castle Museums and Visitor Centre there, because we can welcome the guests and walk them down to the brand new jetty. And the, the new jetty waterways Ireland put in, which is a great asset to the main tourism hub in the county. And a credit to waterways Ireland because they're always upgrading these the wooden jetties, and we've got great floating um, infrastructure now, floating jetties across the lake. Um, in 2019, we developed the Islander Pass in partnership with the castle, and that consisted of a, a self-guided tour of the castle, museums, um, a guided tour out to Devonish Island with ourselves. And we developed the first ever audio guide uh, with a guided commentary from sh local historian Seamus McCanny. And we'll, we'll operate that once again, once it's safe to do so. It's a public tour, so it would be um, a mi mixed groups. The next slide there, please, Karen, thanks. The boats um, hold eight people each and they can travel up to 30 knots. So if you're traveling with us, you get to see much more of the lock. You know, we, we cover a lot of ground in a short space of time. The bright yellow helps us stand out a bit. I suppose we get a lot of people waving at us when we're out in the lock, and so our customers would all be waving back at them. But everyone's very friendly on the lock, I have to say. And uh, we've got quite a nice interior, luxury interior as well. Uh, next slide there, Karen. So the experience, well, it's all about just, as I said in the video, you know, journey into these re remote parts of the lock. And um, there's a few sites we would visit. Inishmack Saint there, White Island. Devonish Island, uh, Tully Castle is another stop, uh, Castle Archdale, we go down to Crom quite often, Carry Bridge, Belle Isle, um, there's, there's multiple places to take people around the lock and uh, I think when you when you put someone on a boat, they can really appreciate what Fermanagh is about, you know, because you're, you're connecting all the dots for them. Next slide there, Karen. Uh, so telling the story, I suppose that's the most important part for us. It's really just bringing the stories of these islands and the places to life. Um, having a local guide allows the customers to ask questions. You know, why is that church there? Who built it? When When do the people leave? You know, these are questions we get asked all the time. And um, it just helps to bring the whole thing to life. And I suppose we just try to have a bit of banter and have the crack with them as well and make it a very authentic, enjoyable experience. So next slide there, Karen. I'll just skip through these. These are four, uh, four tours we offer. And um, we've got the one hour earn experience. You can skip on through them four tours if you want, Karen. The Devonish Island experience, the upper earn experience, and the lower earn experience. And you'll get a bit more information those on the website. But the, the premise basically is you're starting off in a skill in town. You're heading, taking in the history of Enniskillen, heading out past Devonish Island. Um, you can also stop off at Devonish Island on the hour and a half trip. Um, and then up past many of the other islands that people would have inhabited. And then uh, up as far as the Locker and Resort, up as far as the Yacht Club as well. And uh, we're telling the history of the various eras of Locker and history. So you know, the Bronze Age, the medieval period, the plantation period, the monastic period, the, the world, Second World War, up to the modern day. Um, you can skip on to the next slide there, Karen. So 
just a few things we have in development at the minute. We have a new vessel on the way that's um, currently being built. Um, we're going to continue to focus on, you know, the high-end smaller groups, these um, private bespoke tours. This boat will hold up to 12 people, but it's quite a spacious boat. It'll allow us to do a lot more um, specialised tours if you want to skip onto the inside, Karen. Uh, that's the interior. We'll be able to do a lot of specialised tours, partner with other experiences um, with similar customers, the likes of the Boatyard Distillery and the likes of the Nesquil and Taste Experience. And we're open to working with any, any business on the lock. So whether it be a joint offer or um, an event on the boat, I'm open to ideas. So just please get in touch if you have any ideas. Um, I also want to tell more stories about the lock and particularly the island people. And the plan is to do a video podcast out on the new vessel on the lock and around various sites on the lock. So I'm really interested to talk to anybody with an interest and in link with the lock, with whether they work on the lock, the family who still live on islands. Um, again, please get in touch. I'd love to, love, to, love to talk to you. And during lockdown, we took part in a 10-week training course um, to become uh, Geopark champion. So we're hopefully going to be working with the Geopark as well. And that was done through the landscape partnership. So there's lots of things in development now for um, the, the influx of visitors we're going to have and looking forward to getting back on the water, to be honest. So that's that's me, really. I just want to thank Karen and, and Joanne and everybody in the Fermanagh Council Tourism Department there for their opportunity and uh, for all the hard work. You know, it's been a difficult time for tourism. So thank you for your help. And thanks for taking the time to listen to me explain the business. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. That's um, super. And uh, I suppose I've experienced it myself a few times and I have to say it is a fantastic um, tour and a fantastic service that you offer. So, um, and great to see this, the development that's happening as well. Um, we have a question. Uh, oh, go for it. Um, Patrick would like to know, where, will the new boat be available this year? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're hoping to have it on the water this summer. So, yeah, all all going to plan. It's as I say, it's currently being built. So I I am hoping to have it July. Great. Is there any other questions there, Joanne? Or no, just a couple no. of people requesting if they can uh, get a copy of the video, of Barry's video. Yeah, that one's not online. I'll I'll uh, I get a link sent through to you. Joanne and Karen and you can send it on sure perfect thanks thank Barry. you it is it's a very emotive um video definitely well done Barry it's great um okay folks I say if you think of any more questions um you can stick them in the box or we'll have an opportunity at the end as well but thank you Barry that's great um so moving on now we're going to welcome as I say Ethan and Stevie um to take us through the recently opened mountain bike trails at Gorton Glen Forest Park um, this development is a council managed facility um, and I suppose the, the various stages of development at the minute it's been there's been two million pound of investment and um, both from council um, supported by DERA um, but I am not very well placed to talk about mountain biking um, so uh, very glad to have Ethan and Stevie here who have been fully immersed in the development and um, can give you some more information so I'm going to uh, start with a video and then we'll pass it over to the guys to take it through. So here you go.
Thanks a million. Um, and likewise, John and Barry, two, two really good videos. Um, I that I actually have nothing to, <laughs> nothing to do with that video. Stevie did all the work for that video. Um, and uh, like I've seen hundreds of my bike promotional videos, and it's still one of my favorites. Um, partly because I'm from I'm from Oma, so it's nice seeing the local local guys and girls and kids all sort of wrecking around the place. But I think it's just a really good. Um, professional video um, that that the guys all put together themselves and is a uh, yeah really really strong representation for the area. Um, so I'm going to fly through this quite quickly, um, folks. Um, as Karen said, my name's Ethan. I, I work for Outdoor Recreation, and my, one of the main projects I have there is um, looking after Mountain Bike NI. So uh, Mountain Bike NI is one of uh, Orney's consumer brands, and essentially we were formed back in 2012 when uh the trail centers around northern ireland started to to open up so with three with three national trail centers and they all opened up around that time within about a year of themselves so um that's uh that's sort of who we are um what in terms of what uh, my mike and i offers is sort of twofold um there's the sort of the, the public consumer side of things and that's where very much where um, the biggest interest where anyone that's interested in mountain biking, whether they're a diehard or, or someone that's just heard about it recently, and um, we want to be the the hub that they go to for information. So um, I suppose some of the questions coming through there about the trail length and um, stuff like that there. We we have the trail lengths, um, where to eat nearby the trails, where to um, where to stay if you're staying over, um, like information on how to mountain bike, where you can hire bikes, all that stuff we try and incorporate in the one place so that people don't have to like jump around from location to location to to try and find it um and then behind the scenes i guess we were we sort of manage the mountain bike and i consortium um and that's just the different councils that that own these trail centers uh, are on and we try and share things like best practice um we try and keep an eye on the visitor figures um so we've counted data and checks i would say it all the all the sites and we just keep an eye on um, where visitors are going up and where they're going down and, and sort of how we can address that. Um, and then where, where we are. Normally, we're based in, in Belfast in uh, Malone House, but obviously at the minute we are um, working from home. Incidentally, baby's just woken up and there's some shout in the background, so apologies if you can hear that. Um, Karen, you can fire her on there, please. Uh, yeah, so um, customers and visitors. Um, who actually looks at her? age and who mountain bikers are are basically the same thing so um you might not be surprised it's it's very heavily weighed towards males and thankfully that that is changing like certainly over the last five or six years there's been a real increase um in in female riders uh which is great um and but at the minute it's still about 80 percent to 20 percent bias in terms of visitors to our website as well as um the the actual profile of mountain bikers that are out there um, the age range sometimes surprises people. Um, a lot of people think mountain bikers are sort of 16, 17, 18 year olds. Um, the actual, in actual fact, they're, they're usually in their thirties. Um, and the range sort of varies from, uh, 28 to 54. Um, if anyone's interested in nerdy segmentation, when we go to do advertising campaigns for the councils, um, to promote the trails, we sort of look at two, two different segments. One's the hardcore mountain biker. Um, and they traditionally will own uh, multiple bikes. Um, they'll ride on official trails uh, and they will travel quite 
far distances for, for good trails, um, which is good news for us uh, because we have a lot of good trails in Northern Ireland. Um, so a lot of our target audience is the ROI mountain biker, um, where I think Northern Ireland was certainly um, ahead of the game uh, in, in terms of the island of Ireland for creating trail centres. Um, down south is catching up at the minute, uh, culture very aggressively um, investing in mountain bike trail centres, but um, Northern Ireland has a really good name uh, with mountain bikers down south and, and they are willing to travel um, for the trails. Um, the other segment then is the newbie mountain biker and that is, that's the growing market very much. So usually um, guys and girls that were previously playing football or Gaelic or rugby um, and then they uh, retired, <laughs> that's the word, um, and they're looking to get into something else and, and they come across mountain biking. Um, and another big factor in, in that newbie, th newbie category is if a new trail centre opens nearby to them. Um, so for the likes of Gorchin, um, you, you couldn't have missed the fact that there were mountain bike trails opening in Gorchin and uh, between the, the Herald and the Con, there's a big, lots of spreads um, and people sort of take an interest, be like, oh, what's that about? And, and from personal, from being up around the trails, you bump into a lot of people that say, oh, I really tried this before, just took the bike out um, and to see, which which is great. Um, one of the questions Karen had put in, suggested was, have you noticed any changes pre or during COVID? And absolutely. Um, our website traffic in 2020 sort of skyrocketed compared to the year previously, which is great. Um, but it's also, it's, it's actually more impressive than that. It went up over by over a third. But 2019, we had paid advertising campaigns. So we were actually paying um, to drive people to the website. And still in 2020, when we had no paid advertising, that figure went up. And obviously, for the simple reason that people were looking to get outdoors and do to, to go and um, to exercise outdoors, I guess. Um, and uh, Gorchin also was a big factor in that there that we saw a huge spike sort of around the launch in November, December time. Um, so uh, yeah, Karen, fly on to the next one. Uh, so meeting customer needs, um, basically trying to figure out what uh, people want and, uh, and, and, and what is an authentic experience experience that people will enjoy. So this is quite a multifaceted question. Uh, and I'll fly through it very quickly, but essentially the mountain biking experience is in of itself an authentic experience. When you're up at the top of a mountain or just flying through a forest, it, it feels very visceral and enjoyable. Um, but it's who's doing that. I think everyone thinks that when you when you say mountain bike, mountain biking people picture high flying, death defying jumps and rock drops and all the rest. Whereas in actual fact the bigger proportion of the market is more interested in flowy sort of technical things that that most people will be able to do um, if they're able to ride a bike so um one of one of the things that we try and do is basically um figure out what a good trail center looks like and that is very much involving the local mountain bikers and um, so they'll, they're the ones that will know the area they'll know the forest that you're looking at and they'll be able to advise the council on what they want to see um, it, it's about getting a good trail designer as well. So Gorchin had Phil Saxena, who's designed um, the Olympic mountain bike trails a couple of years ago, um, very well respected. And it's about getting good good people on the ground as well to actually build the trails. Um, so we would try and uh, have an input there. Again, all this is leading towards the, the more authentic uh, experience that benefits all mountain bikers. Um, we also then try and so those guys and girls that I mentioned that are the hardcore mountain bikers, we try and revise their expectations that yes, absolutely want well built trails, but the way that you get more people into mountain biking isn't by building um like black level trails or or just pure red trails. It's it's about building green and, and blue trails that everyone can get involved in. Um and again bringing that next generation of people in. Um and then one of the more recent things uh, in terms of trying to create a good customer experience is we've done some work with um, Disability Sport NI um, in the last while and I don't know if anyone's been to Gosford but at Gosford they have um, disability friendly trails um, largely championed by a guy a really impressive guy Brian Lenehan he's from from Armagh um, who Brian Brian is blind but he's also a big mountain biker and a big advocate for for the sport um, and basically he he's put um started a movement towards using quad building trails that'll support quad bikes 
for people with disabilities. Um, Gosford is the first example of that in the UK or Ireland, um, actually. So um, again, Northern Ireland is quite ahead of the game there, and it's something that I think will come into play a wee bit more in the future. Um, so uh, yes, and then finally the question there, have you partnered or collaborated with any other businesses? Absolutely, and that's that's what one of the things I want to make clear today is that um, Gorchin is an incredibly useful resource in terms of like promoting the area because you don't have to be a mountain biker. People don't need to mountain bike. The trails are there and the council have built, invested in those blue trails that nearly anybody can go out and, and trial them. And we have, we have between Stevie, uh, who's the chairperson of the local club, and myself with loads of content that we're happy to share um, with, with people because at the end of the day, we all want the same thing, which is to get people out um, to improve their experience when they're in the area and to and to get them get them on a bike um Karen uh next slide yeah, sorry can I just add in there Ethan as well around the you know the accommodation oh, yes. piece that you have there that obviously that's an example for Dava but about the intention for the Gorchin area and accommodation yes. providers in that area absolutely sorry that's a very good point um we uh, so on the website as I mentioned earlier we have the facility to say like where where to stay where to eat um, that's currently being built for the Gorchin section. So if you go on our website, you can see Gorchin Glens and we've got a map of the information on the trails and all that. And we're currently adding to the website as we go. So um, the where, where to stay and where to eat will be added. And we're happy to, to put anybody on there as well. So it's just a case of um, you can drop drop uh, me an email uh, at info at mountainbikeni.com and we'll we'll be very happy to, to add people to, to that list. And actually, the council have already supplied us quite a quite an extensive list as well. So that's we'll but um, we'll we'll be very proactive about looking to to try and add to that as well. Just to say, I've added the link to uh, the website in the chat. Perfect. Thank you, John. Um, so the next slide, I think, is my last one. You'd be glad to hear. Um, so, what ambitions, hopes have we for the business in future? Um, mountain biking is growing. And, and we know that sort of on a national and local level. Um, nationally, the Outdoor Recreation Network had a, sur a study come out in 2016. And um, that's sort of the most recent uh, accurate data that we have. And over a five year period, they noted a growth of about 1.4 million outdoor um, or sort of off road or mountain biking um, people, basically, people doing it that much more often. Um, and on a local level, then we can see in our, our data across all of the trail centers um, that uh, visitor numbers are going up. Um, and again, they're going up in on those blue trails um, in in a much more significant way than on the, the harder stuff. So then on the red or the blacks. <clears throat> um, collaborations, again, just, just to emphasize, we like at the end of the day, we want to cross sell with as much as many people as possible and um, if anyone's interested in if, if people have come in to stay people come in to stay with them and um, we want to help you let them know about about the resources and facilities that are nearby so i um, very much happy to do this with anybody and and again um, one of the things that we're looking at is cross selling the value of Dava forest which is another uh, trail center um, and gorchin and the two of them are sort of like they're within half an hour of each other so it's a great package and, and equally uh, further west, Blessingburn Estate in Five Mile Town is a really good, is another mountain bike trail centre. And again, about half an hour from Gorton, um, slightly over. So uh, yeah, it's it, it's great for us to be able to, to pair those and, and package them for anyone that's visiting. Um, learnings you'd share with tourism providers. Um, most people, I imagine, at the minute aren't um, aren't spending too much resource in terms of advertising and trying to tell people to come to them. Um, on, a, on a national or international scale. So basically one of the things that we're doing at, at the minute is trying to, to upskill um, using YouTube to, to learn more about Google, like Google AdWords, um, geotargeting, uh, using Google's return customers, um, advertising facility, all of that stuff is, is, is quite an important feature um, today to try and get above the, the mass of people that will be looking obviously to, to promote to their their... Um, experience when things open up again. So uh, yeah, that's that's just one of the things I think would be quite good to work on. And advice, um, go and visit the trails. Um, if you aren't, if you don't have a bike, that's that's no problem. Um, just go visit Gorchin and, and sort of see what there is to offer because 
Worst case scenario, you've got a lovely day out where you get to walk and see some amazing views. Best case scenario, you find a new passion and hobby. And um, genuinely, like I, I'm not a good mountain biker, but I love mountain biking. Um, it's it's a it's a really good way to sort of clear the head and get a bit of exercise in and see sort of see parts of the forest that you would never see. Like I've been up to Mulcairn loads of times, but the mountain biking section of Mulcairn just gives you a completely different like perspective of the sparrows and you saw in stevie's video there that it, it's it's pretty spellbinding um so i'll hand over to stevie here now um i'll just give him a very brief introduction to um because he's very bashful and won't say all these nice things <laughs> about himself but um from from our perspective in outdoor recreation on ireland without stevie and sean and, and a handful of other guys um the trails of gorchen would never have been built um or, or it would have been extended a lot along, uh, like we wouldn't have have them at this stage. Um, the 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 trails came out of, of collaboration with guys in the club and the council, and working working together. And um, I think it's it's really impressive what they've done in such a short period of time. The guys have also just won the mountain bike NI awards for the most um most active club of the last year, um, which is very well deserved. Um, so yeah, they're they're really proactive and are doing a huge amount of good for the local area, and are very very conscious of the fact that the 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 benefits for aren't just there for mountain bikers or people that want to mountain bike, but but it's for the area as a whole. So um, Stevie, I'll hand over to you, and you can maybe say a wee bit about the club and sure and what you guys do. Grand job, thanks very much, Ethan and Karen and everyone else. Um, so yeah, Ethan's touched on basically everything uh, around the mountain biking scene in the north. Um, we started as a club in 2017, um, with now just just under 50 members. Uh, again, as he can said, we began liaison with the council in order to get the mountain bike trails in our local area. Uh, there is a massive need for it here. Um, there was an unofficial network of trails in the Glens before, and every Wednesday night that you would have got a 30, 40 rider strong group going out. So we just got together and obviously we're blazed with the council. We have the, a great network of trails now. Uh, somebody was asking earlier, it's 12 kilometers of red and blue. Uh, in order to do the whole loop, it's about a 16 kilometer cycle. The beauty of the glens is uh, there's a one plane that can incorporate three of the trails, but on that same plane, you can cut off earlier. So if you're not that fit or you're with a young family of kids, you can just cut off and do a smaller loop and, and it's just great. Uh, within the Glens, there's been a great influx of people, as Ethan has said. Um, the car park's full every weekend. Um, and you have families of young kids, older people. In the club alone, we have kids aged five, right up to over 60. So it encompasses every age. Um, so yeah, it's just been great. Uh, what we're doing right now in the club is we're doing a couple of solo ride things so we actually have a scavenger hunt ongoing at the moment up there for club members only and we've initiated a few time trials on certain sections of the trail going forward whenever things open up we're going to be developing the youth we have three irish enduro champions with keenan grant hannah mullen and callum morris all at different age groups uh, so they'll be available for coaching so coaching anyone from young to old uh, beginner to advanced. So we're hoping to do that there whenever I know what's up. Uh, as well as that, Ethan touched on it as well. We're trying to promote women in mountain biking. We have just seven members, I think now, that are females uh, out of the almost 50 odd. So it's good to promote the woman. And then again, once everything opens up, we hope to be putting in place some races in the Glens and sport heaps. So they would draw a crowd of around 100 to 150 riders. And then the spectators or the families and go along with it. So that's all I really have to say. Uh, are there any and I, so that's just our Facebook page. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot more people have been getting in touch asking for information around signage, where the trails start, how long, how hard they are. So we've just been using that on our Facebook page to, uh, to give out some information. Um, I should probably add just, um, I was saying there that uh obviously it wouldn't have happened without stevie and the guys fundamentally at the end of the day it's a kind it's the council that paid for the trails so they 
and I mean, mountain bike trails are always a risk for councils because um, there's a fear of liability and and like there's issues over land ownership and debates with forestry and all all this myriad of things that um can can clog things up and it take it does take um the councils to to take that risk but ultimately I think you'll find that any of the councils that have trail centres whether it's uh, New Morning Down in, in um over in the Morns uh there or Mid Ulster with Dava. Um, or Belfast with their Barnet domain, they they are an incredibly valuable resource for them. And I think at the minute, uh, nearly in, near enough, in almost all of the trail centres are, are, are looking to forward their phase two stages at the minute um, in some, some way or other, which is, which again, is really, uh, like it's a really good sign for mountain bike in, in Northern Ireland for the future. Thanks, Ethan. Um, and thank you, Stevie, um, for, for taking us through the club stuff. I suppose, um, Ethan, when you're mentioning it, it's, it's a perfect example of partnership working and collaboration and how things can happen when we work, all work together. Um, uh, I suppose, like from my point of view, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I know obviously it's council managed facility, but it, it's, it's a great addition to have for our visitor offering. Um, yes, it's maybe a, a specific market, but as you say, it is opening up. And, you know, when something's new and opening up for the, beginners and those with a you know they maybe didn't even know they were interested it's it's a great opportunity um and as you say for both accommodation providers eateries and just offering that overall experience and something else to do in the area so thanks very much guys for taking us through that um joanne can you let us know what the questions are here for yeah, the guys or there's two in at the moment uh one um maybe uh, stevie might be able to tell us um i'll just say what george said and then stevie might be able to give us an uh, an idea on the local uh, what's happening at the minute somebody's asked is there any local mountain bike hire but i know that george earlier in the chat had said that uh, the council is hoping to advertise for expressions of interest for bike hire and bike uplift service for the gorch and glens park over the coming week or the coming weeks so um the, the council is obviously going to try and push that but i don't know whether Stevie might be able to tell us if there's anything currently uh, currently, there's nothing really in place, but the local bike shop, Caldwell Cycles, uh, is happy to hire out a few bikes, but bikes nowadays are few and far between because the demand on them is so high, um, but you could maybe get a hire of uh, an e-bike from Caldwell Cycles. No? Thank you. And then the other question uh, is from Barry, and he was, he says, it looks great, and we'll definitely be visiting, And but he's just wondering... Karen, has there been any progress on the Fermanagh Forestry bike trails? Is that the Scarpland trails, Barry, you're referring to? Hi, the ones up, um, is it up around Big Dog, Little Dog, yeah. Forest, Tempo um, and all that area? Yeah, funny. I was actually checking in with um, the, the Geo Park recently um, for an update on that. And the, the work is on the ground. It's happening. Um, I suppose similar to um, Stevie and Ethan, you know, I suppose originally those mountain bike trails, it's 20 years ago that it was iterated, I believe. And, you know, it took that time and then, you know, their input recently to, to get it to where it is. Um, but I know the Scarpland trails, I mean, the, the work is in the ground, even just from my own personal point of view we were up last Sunday for a walk around um little dog and you can see the work in place you can see that the the posts are going in and um you know I suppose it's not just the posts and the signage and the the way markers it's also picnic tables and you know the gateways so that you can get in with your bikes and stuff like that so they're not they're not ready to open they're not ready to launch but um the work is ongoing at the minute so hopefully um by the time we reopen they'll be they'll be ready by no that, that's that great, answers John. your question It'd be good, definitely. It'd be great oh, to have it, you know. Absolutely. And, and, but all the best, Ethan and Stephen, with the with the trails. It looks fantastic. Thanks for having us, Brian. Um, are there any other questions then, Joanne, for any of the speakers or anything in general? No, I think we've covered them all as we okay. went. Um, somebody had been asking about, um, but I think it was covered by Stevie about the different levels of the trails in in Gorchin, but that was the only other thing that I think it's been covered. Okay, super. Um, I suppose uh, when somebody, or there's a few people obviously asking about Barry's video, um, folks, we actually, we are hoping to create some kind of a video library um, from Fam Trip Friday and from, you know, the various videos that have been both created specifically for this and that people have brought to the table themselves. And um, so with their permission, we are hoping to, uh, say, create some kind of a video library that um, will be available for people to use, um, whether it's for their own purposes or for cross-promotional purposes or whatever. So um, it's, 
like most things, it's a work in progress, but that is what we're the intention, as I say, as we move along. So um, just to throw that into the mix. Um, in terms of coming up, I want to draw your attention to um, the Rural Tourism Collaborative Experience Program that we will be starting to communicate um, very soon. Um, this is funded by DERA and the Council, um, and really it's around looking at developing collaborative experiences um, in our rural um, areas. And the two specific strands that we are looking at um, is one connecting with Kulka. Um, where again, as we're all aware of the numbers of people coming to the boardwalk, but they're maybe staying in Donegal or they're staying in Cavan and they're not, you know, really reaping the benefits of what we as a destination have to offer. So we're hoping that um, through this programme, you know, we can enable our rural businesses to take advantage of those people and to make sure that they do stay um, in the local area. So that's one strand. And the other strand is steeped in the sparing. So again, it's um, creating a cluster to develop an experience. Um, in that area and I mean looking at that beautiful video what it shows that is available there so it's um, so those that program will be coming online in, in the next number of weeks um, but to say if anybody is interested at this point of putting your name forward um, to participate or to hear more as we progress um, please just email us at um, tourismdevelopment at um, and we will obviously keep you informed as we move forward but um, I just wanted to draw your attention to it at this at this point um, and just to remember folks that um, obviously the Tourism Excellence Programme is there um, and it's available to all of you. It's free mentoring services um, and it can be any, any part of your business, whether it's digital marketing, whether it's business planning, whether it is um, experience development, if it's clustering, if there's specific things that you think, OK, actually, I'm interested in that, but I'm not sure how to go about it. Um, anything like that, um, customer um, journey mapping. We had a, a, a webinar on that a couple of weeks ago and people have taken up that. So there's different things. If it's relevant to your business, give us a shout. Um, if it's funding applications, whatever it is, um, we'll, if we have someone there that can help you, we will we'll certainly provide that support. Um, the other business support programs that are available in with our colleagues in economic development, again, they vary from startup right through to people who've been in business for 30, 40, 50 years. So um, there's any amount of support. Um, and again, it's free support. So please do take advantage of it if, if the need is there. Um, so again, just to draw your attention, there's the ongoing TED series with TNI, and I know that their, their current um, webinars are very much focused on people and how the various things that are happening at the moment impact people, whether it's COVID, whether it's um, EU exit, whatever it happens to be. So um, just to be aware of those, and um, we will keep reminding you through our newsletter and our database. Um, if you're on our database, you will continue to get that information. Um, we will be holding, uh, probably not for people on here, but if you know of other people that are either considering starting up a tourist accommodation business or um, are, are in the process of it, we've had quite a number of calls, as you can imagine, people are aware that domestic market and self-catering and all is, is going to be very popular. So we've had quite a number of queries. So we are going to hold a webinar on the 11th of March with, um, our, again, our colleagues from uh, Tourism Northern Ireland in terms of the grading and accreditation. So if, any, if you know anyone who might be interested, again, draw their attention to that. Um, and the next in the series of Fam Trip Friday, all being well, will be on the 26th of March. So um, again, we will communicate with you further um, when we, we know more details of who's presenting and stuff, but just to let you know that that's when it should be happening. Um, and that's it for me, folks, to say if we have any more questions. Yes, one more. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, just one more. It's an easy one, Joanne. Make it an easy one. Uh, well, hopefully it should be. It's for <laughs> Ethan. Just to ask um, if Mountain Bike and I will be working along with the Geo Park to also push the Scarplin trails. Um, good question. Uh, I think it comes down to the council or whoever's managing it. Um, if they want to join the consortium, then absolutely. Um, and even if they don't, we usually do still like try and let people know about it and stuff. So. Um, yeah, I think I think there is discussions happening about that at the minute. Perfect. Thank you, Ethan. Um, folks, I just want to um, finish off by thanking our speakers today. Um, three very interesting presentations. And again, just to see what we have to offer in this area is, you know, it just makes me proud every time we do these. Um, so, um, as I say, look, we will... Um, record this we will share it with on um, through our youtube channel and um, at some stage probably next week um and other than that we will we will keep in touch with you in the weeks ahead all right folks thank you for joining us thanks very much everyone all right thanks take care much. folks bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thanks folks bye